So we began last section by seeking what causes a body to have angular acceleration, and I arrived at defining torque, but angular acceleration was nowhere in the de definition of torque, so you might be asking just how torque and angular acceleration are related. What was the point of getting at torque beyond just being proportional to each other, which you were just taking at face value? What is the proportionality factor? If we go back to thinking of the body as consisting of a large number of particles, we have some body that is green here, and it's consisting of just some large number of particles. And each of the particles, here's an example, one in red, has mass m and distance r from the axis of rotation. A net force acting on one of these particles has uh, three components, f rad, that's the radial component of the acceleration in pink here, and that's radially out from our rotation axis. F tan, so that's tangential to the, uh, to the circle that the particle would be going around if it were rotating around our axis of rotation. And uh, Fz, which is just along the axis of rotation here. So if it's if we're talking about it rotating around the axis of rotation over there, then the only component that does anything is F tangent. Radial doesn't do anything. It's like our door, right? Pushing on the end of the door uh, towards the hinges or away from the hinges. And then Fz is like trying to lift the door up. It's attached at the hinges. So the only thing that rotates this body about this axis of rotation is a force this way or that way, right? The, the purple one there. And so, Newton's second law says that F tan is equal to ma. So let me smallify this guy up there in the corner. Hopefully you can still reference it slightly, even though you probably won't be able to read everything greatly. Uh, but we have F tan being equal to ma. So we're going to write F tan is equal to m a, but the a is the tangential acceleration specifically because acceleration can have multiple components as well. Um, and then also notice this is regular a, this is linear a is what I would say. So this is not alpha, this is not rotational acceleration, this is just regular acceleration. So we can use an equation from last lecture to express this tangential acceleration in terms of angular acceleration of the whole body. And the reason we can express this angular or this uh, acceleration of the particle and relate it to the angular acceleration of the entire body is because we're talking about rigid bodies. And so if it's rigid, the angular acceleration is the same for our little particle as it is for the whole entire body. And that equation from last lecture is a tan is equal to Ra, or R alpha, rather. <laughs> R alpha, got to get that in there somewhere. And R is the R that we've defined it here, so the distance it is from the rotation axis, and this is the angular acceleration. And specifically, this is in the z direction, All right, so if you wrap your fingers around the thumb of your right hand, gives uh, the direction of the angular acceleration. And so if we plug this guy in, right, apply that equation, then what we get is F tan being equal to the mass of our little particle. This is the force on that, the tangential component of the force on the little particle is the mass of the little particle um, times R, the distance that that little particle is away, times alpha z, and that's not just of the particle, that's of the whole body. And um, if we multiply both sides by R, then you get F tan R is equal to m R squared alpha, and that's in the z direction. Do you recognize the left side of this equation? So the force is just the component acting tangentially to the circle about the axis of rotation. And this is R. So this is, this is torque. 
right? There's no cross product there because we're already taking the component that is relevant, right? So F tan, the tangential component to the circle about the rotation axis, times R is the torque on that little particle. And do you recognize the right side of that equation? What's the right side of the equation? This goes back just a little bit further than torque, not too much further. It's not the whole right side, but there's something within the right side that you might recognize. So somewhere in there is a quantity that we should recognize from last lecture. How about this mr squared part? That's just I, the moment of inertia of the particle about the rotation axis. Moment of inertia, mr squared. Or rotational inertia is my preferred name, but I'll use both. So if we write, rewrite this in terms that we know now, this is the torque. The torque is equal to I alpha, z direction. And the moment of inertia uh, this is about the chosen moment, uh, chosen rotation axis, and I didn't mean to write a z there. Um, and so it's different for each little particle. So if we add up all of these for every particle, right? So if we were just considering this is the torque on particle one, and this is the moment of inertia of particle one, and then alpha, the angular acceleration, is the same no matter what particle you're talking about. Then we would have another torque of particle 2, right? whatever we're considering particle 2 on the body. Right? And if the body contains many, many, many particles, then we have to add all of these up. And you find the total torque. And that's in the z direction. So this is a z, not a 2. Total torque is equal to I, the moment of inertia in total, times alpha z. And so this is the one to box in. This is Newton's second law for rotation. Right? So F equals MA, the second law. Some force is equal to mass times acceleration. This is what we were talking about in the linear realm, or the non-rotational realm. Here we have some torque, and we, it's torque not just force, because we know that it matters. There's certain things about the force that matter, which way that it's applied, how far away it is from the rotation axis, blah, 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 instead of just the magnitude of the force alone. Uh, instead of just m, we have the moment of inertia, because if you have more weight, like we talked about in the section with moment of inertia, if you have more weight farther from the rotation axis, it's harder to, uh, to spin the thing than if you have things uh, more weight closer. And so it matters the distribution of weight from the rotation axis. So you can't just say the weight of the body. It matters what rotation axis there is and how the mass is distributed around it. And then the rotational acceleration, uh, just like the linear acceleration. So we're talking about rotational acceleration, so we use alpha there. So it's Newton's second law for rotational things. Um, and in words, it says that the net torque on a rigid body, and it's important to remember that we're specifically talking about rigid bodies, equals the body's moment of inertia about the rotation axis times its angular acceleration. So um, we can't use this to determine the motion of fluids or deformative objects, but any rigid bodies, then this applies to. All right.